So today we're going to talk about the changes of physical state that happen uh, between the three different phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Um, you know the words melting, boiling, condensation, freezing, things like that. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about what happens in terms of energy when those things change. We'll start with kinetic energy uh, because kinetic energy is a big part of this whole process. And so we want to make sure we understand um, how it relates, okay? So the difference in physical states is really just a difference in the amount of kinetic energy. Solids have very little, liquids have some in the middle, and gases have quite a bit of kinetic energy. It's the motion of the particles, okay? That's what we're talking about. As you add heat to matter, that heat is transformed into kinetic energy, and so it makes the particles move faster. If you take heat away, which we call cooling, the amount of kinetic energy decreases, the particles move more slowly. So that's the basic idea of how kinetic energy works in terms of particle motion. We already know this, right? So let's talk about the first change. Solids changing to liquids. All right, we know this is melting. The technical name for this is fusion. Okay, that's what it's called. So what happens here? Well, we know that solids start with very little kinetic energy to begin with. As you add energy to a solid, the first thing that happens is the temperature of the solid will go up because you're adding kinetic energy. And remember, temperature is a measurement of kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the solid is going to go up. The temperature will go up until you reach what's called the melting point. That's the temperature where the physical state change happens, starts to happen. Once you get there, any energy that you add at that point is going to be used to break the particles out of their positions. Remember that in a solid, the particles are in a fixed position. They're just vibrating. Once we reach the melting point, well, now we start breaking them out of those positions. And they start moving around a little bit more. Okay. Uh, the temperature, though, of, of a solid when it's melting doesn't change until all the particles break free of their positions. That's an, an interesting and um, fact that most people don't know. Now, the opposite change, of course, liquid to solid, we know is freezing, but its official name is solidification. As you take energy away, you cool it down, the temperature of the liquid is going to decrease, the particles are going to be moving more slowly, until you reach what's called the freezing point. Now, the freezing point is the same temperature as the melting point. It's the exact same point. It's just one you're going up in temperature, and the other one you're coming down. When you reach there, the particles start to adopt their fixed positions. They, start to stay, they stop moving in space, and they start to just stay still and vibrate. The temperature, again, will not change until all the particles are fixed, and then it'll start to drop again. Okay, So if we look at this particle diagram, we see the solid particles are vibrating, but they're in fixed position. We add heat. We get them to break their fixed position. They're still moving. And then we'll add some more heat, and we'll get it to go to gas. If we go the other way, liquids uh, moving around, removing energy, uh, and then we, they start to adopt a very fixed, regular pattern of positions. All right, liquid to gas. Well, that's called boiling, or technically ev evaporation. Okay, As we add energy to a liquid, the temperature of the liquid goes up until you reach the boiling point. Okay, That's the temperature where the things are going to start to boil. Once you reach the boiling point, any more energy that you add, instead of changing the temperature, it's used to separate the particles from each other, separate them and, and get them to not touch anymore. You have to overcome something called intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces, the word intermolecular tells you exactly what it means. Inter means between, and molecular means molecules. So intermolecular forces are forces between molecules that hold them together. And you have to overcome those in order to separate the molecules. You've got to break those forces. Again, the temperature is not going to change until all the particles are separated from one another. And then the temperature will start to go up again. Going the other way gas to liquid, we have to cool it down. It's called condensation. We remove energy from a gas. It starts to slow the particles down. Temperature of the gas goes down until you reach the condensation temperature, which is the same temperature as the boiling point. Once you reach that temperature, as you take, continue to take energy away, particles will stop moving as quickly. They'll start to contact each other. They'll become a liquid. And again, temperature is not going to change during this phase change. It's going to stay constant until all the particles have condensed, and then it'll start to drop again. Okay, So again, a liquid, you add heat, separates the molecules of the particles from each other, and if you remove energy, those particles will come back and st stick together again. Okay, 
Um, here's a graph of temperature versus time for water. Okay, so at the very left hand side at the bottom at minus 20 degrees, you know we have ice, water is ice at minus 20, and you'll notice that as we add energy, we're going to be adding energy here, uh, over time the temperature of the ice goes up, and then when it reaches zero degrees, it stops changing. It stops changing as the ice is melting until all of those particles are out of their fixed positions, the temperature stays exactly the same. And you'll have a mixture of ice and water until that happens. Then, once we're all converted into a liquid, then the temperature starts to rise again over time. And that's liquid water. Once we get to 100, that's the boiling point, the temperature stops changing because all of the energy that I add at this point is going to be used to separate the water molecules from one another. Now, water molecules are really strongly attracted to each other, so it takes a while. It also takes a temperature that's pretty high for water. Okay, But eventually, all of the particles are separated as the gas, steam, and then if we continue to add energy, that steam will continue to heat up. Okay, so it's just another way of looking at that. There are some things to think about, okay? And we'll get to those at the end of this lecture. So there's one other phase change that most people don't realize is, is actually a thing. It's called sublimation, or the opposite would be called deposition. And this is when a substance can change directly from a solid right to a gas. It doesn't melt. It doesn't go to a liquid. It's called subliming. Um, so if the particles of the solid aren't really strongly held together, the solid will sublime. It'll go directly to gas form. Okay. Also, instead of condensing, the gas just turns back into a solid. We say it deposits. Okay. Carbon dioxide, dry ice, right, and iodine both do this. Dry ice is called dry ice because it doesn't turn into a liquid. It goes directly from solid to gas. Hence, it's dry. And iodine is similar, although iodine does it at a higher temperature. Some pictures of these. The iodine turns into a purple vapor, and we, you've seen probably dry ice before, where it turns into a gas directly and it doesn't melt. All right, some things to remember. The temperature of a substance doesn't change during a change of state until the change is complete. Temperature will stay exactly at zero degrees until all the ice is melted, and then it'll go up again, even if you're adding, if you've got a, a Bunsen burner underneath it. Its temperature will not change until the, the phase change is complete. Melting and freezing happen at the same temperature. Similarly, boiling and condensation happen at the same temperature. And finally, the, ta the temperature for a state change and the time it takes is dependent on how strongly the particles are attracted to each other. This is the intermolecular forces. We call them IMFs for short. So the stronger the attraction between particles, the higher the temperature is going to take to break them apart and the longer it's going to take to break them all apart. And if you think about it, that should make sense, right? All right, so that's it. Make sure you take good notes and we'll talk about this more in class.